My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey, welcome back everybody. Have you ever watched one of those flipping shows on TV? Of course you have, but they're all over the place. They make them look super sexy, super easy, super profitable. That's not always the case, but our special guest today, Rick Rose, is zooming in all the way from beautiful Windsor, Ontario. And Rick is a very experienced real estate investor and a realtor. And he's done a number of different things around quick flips and longer flips. Last time we had Rick on the show, we were talking about rent to own. Today, we're going to be talking about his process for doing profitable flips without spending a ton of cash. So, Rick, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Yeah, thank you so much, Dave. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here. All right. Give me a snapshot of what your real estate investing business looks like today, mid-2024, especially when it comes to doing flips. Uh, right. As we speak, I'm in the middle of doing a flip personally, uh, nice. which I continue to do. And I use a lot of pictures and videos from that uh, to help other people uh, if they wanted to know anything about flips and that to uh, to, to help them out. I also, uh, I do help other people uh, yep. for, with information on uh, flipping houses. It can be very lucrative. All right. So we were talking a little bit off camera that you've kind of come up with your own process. You got your, like your four major focus areas or steps when you're doing a flip. Why don't you walk us through those, Rick? Uh, you know, from, from a million different things that everybody teaches, I've got it down to the four, four basic things. And the, the I, bottom I, I one, like simplicity myself. I think simplicity. I Keep it simple, Rick. <laughs> The bottom thing is, and when do you make your money? You have to buy it right to make sure that you're buying it at least at a wholesale price or, or something that is less than retail. Uh, the next one up with my crew and and uh, my Eric, <laughs> who's my general handyman and just handles just about everything, um, I typically budget $20,000 and then add on a $5,000 kind of buffer because you never know what you're going to find. Uh, when you're working on a house. So I can do a whole flip and it'll turn out incredible, beautiful. Even Dave Dubois would go, geez, Rick, that's nice. <laughs> uh, so $25,000 for the cost of the actual flip. The next number up, I put in $100,000. That's kind of flexible. Uh, typically uh, put, put in $100,000 for what? Profit. Profit. All right. So you're looking for $100,000 profit. Got it. After everything is paid for, how much do I put in my bank account? And to be very honest with you, it's typically between ninety and a hundred thousand, but that's how much profit I make off of a flip. And the the final number at the top is the ARV or the after repaired value. Um, if all of those things line up, then we move forward with with that particular house. If they don't, we go looking for something else. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense, Rick. So. Um, 20,000 to 25 sounds very, very low for renovation costs to do a, a flip. So these must be pretty cosmetic type jobs that you're doing. The, the, the four or five things that I do to every home, one brand new kitchen, brand new bathroom, brand new flooring, professional paint job inside and brand new trim on the inside. Well, you must be getting a smoking deal on your stuff to be able to do all of that for 20 or 25 grand. Not bad. I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> yeah, nice. So what, what, what is, I mean, again, so people, especially people in Canada are going, how the hell are you doing all of that for 25 grand? So Dave, let, let me idea. ask you a very quick question. Yeah. If you and I walked into Home Depot, how much does it cost to buy a toilet? Haven't looked for a while, my friend. I don't know. 100, 150 bucks, maybe 175. Got it. Yep. A vanity with the sink, probably $350. Yeah. A tub is probably five, six hundred dollars. I think we're probably up to about a grand. Okay, so pretty much, except for the ceramic tile flooring, uh, bathroom's done. Kitchen cabinets. Or I can get a whole set of kitchen cabinets, depending on the size of the kitchen, for about thirty six hundred dollars. Flooring for the whole house is about the same, touch under four thousand dollars. Paint is, you know, the material is five hundred dollars. It's split up between I pay my guy, my Eric, $8,000 for labor. Hmm. 
and it's done in one month, done in one month. I pay him well. He does an incredible job. And I spend approximately $12,000 on all the materials, bathroom, kitchen, flooring, paint, and so on and so on. All right. Trim so that's the last one. So that's really smart. So you've got a fixed cost for your labor. You've got your Eric guy that's your handy guy. <laughs> is he doing all this stuff by himself or is he bringing in helpers? How does that typically work? I, I pay him the 8,000 bucks. And if he needs helpers, that's his responsibility. That's coming out and, of his 8,000 bucks. Yeah. And, and, and typically uh, he brings in one helper. He he's really good and he's really fast. So, but typically yeah. he does have and one. It, and he's incentivized to be good, be fast. That's for sure. That's right, exactly. Ooh, all right. right. Well, that makes sense. Um, what was the other question I was going to ask? Okay. So a hundred thousand dollar profits, what you're looking for. ARV after repaired value. That makes sense. Hey, Rick, maybe walk us through the example of the flip that you're doing right now. And obviously we understand that it's in process, hasn't been sold. It's all kind of, you know, the, the, the numbers aren't firm yet, but you got a pretty good idea. So maybe walk us through how much it costs you, uh, like each one of your four steps there, if you don't mind. Um, I found the place and, and the, I won't go long on it, but I bought it for 485 and then they found other writs on title. So that brought it up to 505. And on the day before closing, they found another writ on title. So I finally paid 517. This is in Windsor. It's in a great location, nice neighborhood, three bedroom brick, um, formal living room, formal dining room, eating kitchen, four piece bath upstairs, downstairs, family room, family room with a pool table. Four piece bath. I, sauna. I, bet, I bet they left the pool table there for you. They did, and they were nice. <laughs> not happy with having to do that, but <laughs> we're putting it right back. There's actually nice. dints in the carpeting. So we want the pool table to fit right back into the dents. Yeah, those pool tables are a pain in the butt to move, that's for sure. They are. Yeah. Um, we do have a four piece bath downstairs, including a, a full cedar sauna. Yep. Uh, so in, what vintage the, is the house? And, and what it, and 1975 what it, it was built. Okay, and it hasn't been updated for quite some time? Since 1975. <laughs> <laughs> Six, All right, very nice. 16 by 32 foot in-ground pool. Hmm. Now, remember that 5,000 buffer I was talking about? We had to put a new motor into the uh, filter, and that was about 600 bucks or something with labor and everything else. So the, the little $5,000 buffer is pretty important. So even for a fairly large house like this, you're able to go in. Well, now you got a couple of bathrooms that you might need to, to upgrade. Two bathrooms, yeah. The one upstairs was in perfect condition, needed paint, obviously. The one downstairs needed a little bit more work. I really wasn't too bad. But it includes the sauna, which <laughs> is absolutely wonderful. And when it's finished, and before I sell or leave that place, I'm going to spend time in the sauna. And I'm going to take at least one dip in the pool. You got to test drive it, man. You got to make sure it's, it meets it's, your standards. It's got to be perfect. All right. So you're going to, so again, is this going to fall into your criteria about 25 grand in for your Eric guy to fix it all up and, and have it okay, renovated? And absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what do you anticipate? So you're into it for 517 plus 25. Round it to 30, 525, yeah, 50. So let's say you're into it for 550 round numbers. Okay. Um, What's what's your anticipated ARV? Um, I'm a realtor. I used to be an appraiser, so I I, I tend to be pretty accurate. I brought it in at about six eighty five. The lender did an ARV appraisal on it, brought it in at six ninety three. Even better. Okay, we'll use theirs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. somewhere you know around six eighty five, six ninety or something is fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right, so then you're going to sell it. It looks like you got your 100 k, if not more, in profit there. The advantage is you're uh, a realtor, so you get to be the listing agent as well. So you get to double dip on that. So that's that's a good deal. It just saves me the listing commission, but certainly I'm offering a commission when it goes on the market to another realtor of to course. bring in the offer. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But but you get you get the listing agent commission. So that's good. I do. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Yeah. My yeah, listing yeah. agent's so, a really nice guy. So <laughs> Cool. So um, what are some of the, the mistakes that you see newer flippers making when they, you know, after they've watched a few HGTV shows and they they jump in, where are they typically screwing up? Where, where What kind of messes are you typically helping your your students out of if if they haven't gotten coaching before they met you? 
they, they jump in with without knowing what I've never done a flip before. Uh, but I hear you can make some pretty good money at it. So yeah, I think I'll do this. And they rush out and buy a house. And, and that's absolutely the wrong thing to do. Talk to somebody who's been successful at it. You know, talk to a mentor, whatever. So, so basically they're they're going in completely blind. They think they might be getting a deal. They've got no idea of what the renovation costs are actually going to be. They have no idea what the ARV is or what ARV means. <laughs> like, you, you're doing good dave keep going yeah no i'm <laughs> yeah, just I'm all the just, above seriously yeah, yeah. you know it, it sounds sexy to them at one point they changed the light bulb in the living room and now they can renovate a house uh, and another that's a very good point too one thing is they try and take on too much they try and do a lot of the work one of the secrets is get in get out as quickly as possible Velocity. my time m mine and eric's is 30 days we are in and out finished gorgeous 30 days yeah. And maybe it takes a few weeks to get it sold, but you're you're in and out quickly, right? That's the whole idea. Typically, I'll own a home for three months. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to pick your mind for a few experienced flipper tips here, Rick. So number one is, what do you find works best for finding the, the perfect flip property for you? What I mean, you're a realtor, so you're tapped into MLS, but the average person who's not a realtor, what suggestions do you have for them? The first thing I've got to say is 25, 20, 25% of all my good deals that I find are not on the MLS. Mm -hmm. They are not. The best places are word of mouth. Get the word out there. I, I am a flipper. I'm looking for a good deal. If you know of anybody who has a house that is really doesn't look in good condition, let me know. Another great place is there's a lot of wholesalers out there. And their job basically is to go out and find homes and Sell them to people like me. They make a couple of bucks on the way through. I fix it up, make a couple of bucks on the way through. Uh, Hopefully a couple of more bucks because you're, you're more at risk. That's for sure. But anyhow, yeah. <laughs> well, they make a couple. I make a few. <laughs> <laughs> um, generally, off market is, is the place to go. Look yeah. on Kijiji. Look on um, some of the uh, uh, marketplaces actually good, uh, pretty good. Homes for sale, for sale by owners. Um, if you could talk to lawyers uh, and, and say, do you know anybody who's kind of in trouble? Bank managers aren't really allowed to tell you that, but sometimes... Neither, neither are lawyers, but hey, some of them do. <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> some of them actually cut loose and <laughs> they'll, uh, well, yeah, I'll have this person give you a call. I heard they're, they're, they might be in trouble, yeah. which is absolutely wonderful because if they're going power sale, and I've done that, got them out of the power sale situation. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, one of the things, Dave, you know this, one of the things is if you try and help people, the, the help will come back to you. Yeah, no, for sure. So, I mean, obviously you got to make a profit, but mm -hmm. typically people that are in these kind of situations need to get out of the house and need quick, they need to get out of it quickly. Another question I got for you, Rick, how are you typically financing these properties? Are you getting some bank finance? And we were talking, you know, you're in Canada, it's it's half million dollar plus properties. That's a fair chunk of change. So are you going in all cash? Are you getting some financing? What what does that usually look like? To be honest, I try and use as little of my money as I can. I've yeah. got a couple of bucks, but I try not to. And there is a, an organization. I, they might be called a mortgage company or a loan company, but it's basically private kind of lending. They're based out of Alberta. Mm -hmm. And uh with 20% down, they will give you, their, all their money is short term, but they, they'll give you, uh, say, a six-month uh, mortgage. They are yeah, set 80% up. 80% loan, loan to purchase price, I guess, in this case, right? Well, with 20% down. They yeah. also have a program where with $20,000, they'll fund the rest. As long as the ARV, the, the amount you're buying it for in the ARV kind of makes sense, they will allow... This property that I just am half three quarters of the way through, yep. half a million dollar property, I put 20 grand down on it and they financed uh, the 485 or whatever it was. Because they saw that the after repaired value um, was whatever. So they're, they're like usually substantial they, enough. Yeah. Usually what I've heard in the past, and I lay no claim to being a flipper, I've, I've never flipped a house per se like that, but it's, you know, if you're getting it at 70% or less, 
Now that's of not necessarily of ARV. That's of current market value. That's why you know flippers in a lot of places are trying to buy things 50, 60, 70 cents on the dollar. So they got that cushion. So then the lender feels comfortable loaning them the full amount minus 20 grand or whatever. So it must so you must have got a pretty smoking deal on this property up front for these guys to feel comfortable enough. Is is that that that's a, a fair statement. Yeah. At yeah. the 517, even the condition it was in, which is dated kitchen cupboards and everything, it was probably, you know, on retail, probably could have got it for, you know, 585 or or something like that up in that yeah. area. And so I did were... buy this one, by the way, through a wholesaler. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. There you uh, go. So, perfect. Okay. Now, as we're wrapping things up here, Rick, the other question I've got for you as a an experienced flipper and a realtor. What do you find works best these days for curb appeal and getting these suckers sold quickly? Like what are you, uh, are you staging the whole property? What are you, what are you doing? That's, that's working nicely for getting it sold fast. I've asked my wife to go to all the places right at this time of year that have sales on, on annuals and colorful flowers, fill up the front curb appeal is incredibly important. Uh, staging. Yes. Staged, uh, every one of my flips. And I typically right now do two to three a year just to kind of stay in the game along with helping other people. Uh, this is the first time that I'm going to try AI to stage Uh a home. Okay. Yeah. I'm hiring, uh, or actually my assistant, I'm paying for the software, the program, whatever. And my assistant's going to stage the home with AI. I've watched a few of the videos and it looks like it does a very good job. So we'll find out in about another week. Yeah. So we'll see, but yeah, it looks good on pictures, but I'm wondering like people go to the actual house. Then what? Right in the description, I am going to put, this is AI staged home is vacant. Uh, Ready to uh, move in or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Another secret because I live in, in and do business. I live in Windsor is Mm -hmm. when I, to help sell the home, I put it on the local MLS, obviously, but I also put it on the Toronto real estate board. Hmm. There's a lot of people moving from Toronto down this way toward Windsor. And this type of home for $700,000 would be 1.3, 1.4 in Toronto. Seems like a bargain. Exactly. It it, it seems like a bargain. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome, Rick. All right. Well, Hey, if people want to connect with you and find out more, where can they go? What they should, what should they do? Probably the easiest way is just go on to Facebook and it's uh, um, Rick Rose real estate flipping mastery. So if you type in real estate flipping mastery, you'll, you'll find me as I, as I come up and that's probably the easiest way. Sounds good. All right, Rick. Well, thanks very much for sharing some insights and your experience. Dave, again, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. All right, everybody take care and we'll see you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.